I hope I'm the Yorkshire Time Lord. Now this is my alternate personality, the Yorkshire Avenger, with my review of Marvel Studios She-Hulk Season 1. So I haven't done one of these for a while because I had a bit of a, uh, a bad cold and I didn't really feel appropriate really when the uh, Queen passed away to upload something onto uh, to YouTube given that the entire country was in, in mourning for the Queen. But I thought I'd do a review of Marvel Studios She-Hulk because I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really really great series. I thought Tatiana Rosali in the lead role of She-Hulk, I thought she was so good in that lead role. She's got great comedy timing and uh, she really she really does play that role of like a, uh, a lawyer who becomes a, a Hulk quite well. It's quite a different sort of series for Marvel Studios, if it's taking more of a kind of a sitcom approach. In some ways, I guess you could sort of say that's similar to WandaVision, uh, which kind of um, paid homage to various uh, American sitcoms. But I'd say that She-Hulk is very much its own unique entity. You've got a bit more of a kind of, uh, you know, lawyer case a week going on with She-Hulk, whereas, you know, WandaVision was more about the uh, ongoing mystery over why, you know, Wanda and Vision are in these uh, really weird sort of uh, twisted uh, broken mirror versions of old American sitcoms. But yeah, I, I quite like the uh, the lawyer, you know, case of the week sort of approach. It was really interesting getting to see all these different kind of unusual... Uh, superhero characters that you wouldn't normally see in the uh, the MCU, such as uh, Leapfrog, for example. That was uh, one of my favourites. I thought Leapfrog was <laughs> quite a uh, quite a laugh. Seemed like a bit of a, uh, a loser the way that uh, the way that it was portrayed, and uh, when he's uh, kind of confronting those uh, those bad guys in that car park, and uh, he puts the wrong fuel in his uh, his shoes that were provided by the costume designer Luke. Yeah, I, I quite liked the uh, the approach that I went for with, uh, with She-Hulk, this really interesting uh, case of a week combined with this 4-4 uh, breaking humour, which She-Hulk is also known for in the comics. I know that there's like a really iconic She-Hulk uh, comic strip where she literally steps out of the panels of her uh, Marvel comic story and she actually talks to the reader. And I kind of went for a similar vibe in the uh, the finale of She-Hulk, uh, where she literally steps outside of a Disney Plus panel and she finds herself in <laughs> Marvel Studios. I really liked the conversation with Kevin and the kind of nod of the X-Men, you know, when are we going to get the X-Men? I thought that was uh, very funny. A reflection of what, uh, you know, many audiences watching the show are thinking, because, uh, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of us are wanting to see the X-Men in the future of the, uh, the MCU. And... It's nice as well, the focus that it placed on Jennifer Walters as a character. She goes on a real character journey throughout She-Hulk. She seems like someone with, you know, kind of low self-esteem. She has confidence issues and over the course of the series, you know, she learns to accept herself for who she is and then um, accept who she's become as uh, She-Hulk. And, uh, you know, you've got a nice sort of exchange as well when uh, Matt Murdock comes in and Matt Murdock tells her how she's got a unique opportunity to be both a lawyer and a hero as well, which can help people as a lawyer, which can also help people as a hero when the law fails them. I thought that was, um, you know, a really great way to use Matt Murdock, somebody who we have seen in a Netflix uh, Daredevil series. Take that, you know, very same kind of approach. He helps people win their legal battles, but when you know, the law fails them, he, uh, he helps them find justice through other means. You know, it's a really great way to use Matt Murdock and show it from his perspective, somebody who's gone through the same journey as Jennifer Walters. You know, that's kind of what's great with Bruce Banner as well, with Jennifer Walters being, you know, Bruce Banner's cousin. He knows what it's like to be a Hulk, and he's already gone on that journey before as a Hulk, and so has Abomination as well. So those are characters that can very much... Um, influence Jennifer's journey and help her come to terms with her new identity as a She-Hulk. I thought those are things that were done very well in, in She-Hulk. I wasn't really surprised that Jennifer and Matt end up becoming an item. I kind of saw that coming ever since her first meeting in uh, in, in episode uh, episode 8. It seems to be getting quite close and seems to have you know quite a you know good little dynamic and uh, you know you could tell there's something brewing between them. So I wasn't really that surprised when he ended up becoming an item. But I do think they work really well as a couple, and I do hope we get to see more of them uh, together in the future of the MCU. If you're watching this, Kevin Feige, please have Jennifer Walters in Daredevil Born Again, and let's see more of their relationship in that show. 
Another thing that I really liked was that we got to see, uh, you know, a bit of Wong and we got to see his uh, comedic side, you know, come out a bit when, uh, when, when Jennifer represents Wong in the, uh, in the series regarding uh, the magician, Donny Blades, who uses tricks that are uh, essentially used by the uh, sorcerers, by the sorcerers in his kind of, in his magical realm. I thought that was really, you know, really quite cool to see, you know, Wong introduced in the series. And I thought he worked really, really well um, in She-Hulk 2. I think, you know, the character's got this, you know, great sense of humour that really, you know, suits Jennifer Walters' show. And he really fits in alongside some of the other characters, like uh, Pug. He, he works, you know, with the sort of comic sensibilities uh, that are present throughout the uh, She-Hulk series. It's really fun in particular seeing his, you know, sort of dynamic with Madison who accidentally uh, ends up in his care following one of Donny Blaze's uh, magical stage illusions. I thought those two, you know, worked really fun together and that's another dynamic I'd like to see explored further in the MCU. It does seem we're getting more of Wong and Abomination together, judging by the post credit tease from the end of episode 9. Yeah, which is, you know, something that would be, you know, quite cool to see whenever that, you know, may take place in, in the future. It'd be great to see, you know, more of Wong and Abomination hanging out. Because there seems to have a bit of an interesting friendship going on there, you know, with uh, Wong helping Abomination break out of prison and take part in various sort of cage fights. There's certainly, um, you know, a few kind of, you know, legal issues there that, you know, you could see Jennifer Walters maybe, you know, sort of exploring in a future season of She-Hulk. But yeah, I'm interested to see what to do there with regarding Wong and, and, and Abomination's friendship. Would it be a, a spin-off? Would, would I get the one spin-off on Disney Plus, or would it just be something in uh, in She-Hulk season two? It certainly would be interesting to see uh, see what they go for. I like the way it utilizes the sitcom trope as well of the uh, Bottle episode. For example, the Reddick episode where we meet Josh, and God, Josh was certainly a very despicable individual. The way that he films Jennifer while she's asleep and allows Intelligentsia to broadcast it and the lawyer Gala, that's really disgusting behaviour from him. I'm disappointed he didn't get any kind of proper comeuppance to Josh really, because what he did was absolutely awful. He really exploited the poor woman and she had that broadcast in front of all those people. You know, you don't really get to see him again after that, that uh, episode, which is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And then there's Todd as well who is revealed to be the leader of the Intelligentsia, essentially this group of sexist individuals. And I wasn't really surprised by that, really, because there were kind of a few hints that there was something, you know, a bit off of him. Like when he calls Jennifer um, on regarding a, um, a law issue, when he explains uh, how he bought a, uh, a condon spear from an auction. You know, that kind of made him seem a little bit fishy. And then not to mention there was all those times where he was sort of questioning She-Hulk about her abilities, which kind of raised a few alarm bells as well. But yeah, it was not really, I mean, I wasn't really surprised by it, but I thought it was a good review all the same, because it made sense within the context of the story and what they seemed to be, you know, gravitating towards. And it also explained the storyline regarding the uh, She-Hulk blood as well, with uh, the working crew trying to get hold of She-Hulk's blood. It turning out to be uh, essentially Todd who asked the working crew to get a hold of her blood. Because we had earlier in the season, we, you know, we, we saw Todd essentially asking her what could pierce her skin and she mentioned vibranium. So it kind of implied early on that he had an interest in getting a hold of her blood. So, it, you know, it kind of, it was a, it was a review that did make a ton of sense. And, uh, you know, it was a really kind of natural evolution of the story that I feel that they were, they were going for. And uh, you know, I like how it led up to him injecting, a, injecting himself with the, you know, Hulk blood. Or whether that still happened or not, I'm not sure, because she will just go straight into our studios and change the ending. So who knows what happened anymore? Anything could have, uh, could have, could have happened uh, now. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty mad, really, all that for for uh, for for breaking, uh, for, for for breaking stuff. I do think it's a shame that Jamila Jamil didn't get more to do with Titania because she was introduced in an earlier episode and she seemed, you know, a lot of fun. She was this, you know, really, you know, quite sort of jealous, self-obsessed social media influencer who you know, is clearly very jealous of Jennifer Walters and the platform that she's been given as a She-Hulk. But we don't actually see much of her really throughout the series. You know, we see her in the first episode. Then we see her again in this one where she's trying to claim a She-Hulk trademark for herself. And then we essentially see her 
um, at the Reading as well. And you know, it's not like, you know, at least with Josh, we did see him after the Reading episode, in the episode that followed, you know, what we saw him in that episode. But then we didn't see him again after that. We've, we've, with Titania, she just kind of disappears after the last episode she appears in at the wedding. She just disappears after the wedding episode. And then she doesn't really appear again into the final, into, into the finale. And we don't really get any sort of conclusion to her character, really. It's kind of unclear as to whether in the finale she's on She-Hulk's side, or if she's essentially on the side of Intelligentsia and believes that Sir Jennifer's not deserving of her powers. It would have been nice to have seen her get a bit more development. You know, whilst it was nice to see, you know, Daredevil again in the final episode, it probably would have been better if we'd got more, a bit more of Titania and found out more about her motivations and, you know, where she currently stands with She-Hulk. Is she, a, you know, an enemy or a friend now? It would have been nice to have seen, you know, a bit, a bit more, a bit, a bit more of a conclusion with uh, Titania's story, really. Hopefully she returns for a second season so we can see a bit more of Titania and we can see, you know, her story develop a bit more and we can find out more about her and where, where you know where she currently stands with Jennifer and uh, you know what her villain motivations are. Well yeah overall I did you know really enjoy She-Hulk, you know it's not a series about its flaws, but it is a you know very enjoyable series overall. Anyway, what are your thoughts on She-Hulk's first season? Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.